good evening everyone so now we'll have a discussion on this topic that is green revolution uh, everybody must have heard about this term green revolution when i look at this term green revolution as a term was coined as early as 1961 it was not a program started by any government or it was not a government scheme basically there were certain changes that we witnessed in the system of agriculture all around the world that resulted in an increased production of food grains and this is what we refer to as the green revolution because suppose i look at a term revolution now compare this term revolution with a term reform jaise suppose i have a term reform and compare reform with revolution this is suppose land reforms economic reforms and then we have white revolution green revolution both reform and revolution they are going to signify a change but the difference is while reform is often considered as a gradual process revolution is a sudden change when a lot of change takes place within no time that is generally considered as a revolution it can be a peaceful revolution it can be a revolution associated with violence it can be a bloody revolution so green revolution refers to the change that we witnessed in the system of agriculture and this led to increase in the food grain production okay understand what is uh, what led to this green revolution see when you look at increasing the agriculture production one of the ideas is agriculture production around the world or in any part can be increased if we are going to use the modern inputs whenever we use the modern inputs use of modern inputs can increase the production like for example if i use the better quality seeds i can have a better production if i use better quality fertilizers the production can improve if i use better Uh, machines that in that case i can find more efficiency there can be a better production so there was a time when we thought that modernization that is use of the modern inputs which were considered modern by then chemicals and machines they can increase the agriculture production suppose i am cultivating a crop and i apply urea to the soil when i look at urea what i am going to find is urea is going to help in increasing the agriculture production whenever you add urea urea helps in faster growth of the plants okay so if i want to increase the rate of the plant growth i apply urea acha now the plant grows to some height because of the urea application let's say it is a wheat crop okay and wheat sees a good increase in its growth because of the application of those fertilizers like urea then what happens is if the grain filling starts the panicles of wheat they are filled with the grains this part of the plant where we have the this is the part wherein the grains are filled now once the grains are filled then the plant becomes very heavy at the top the height is good and now with the grain filling the plant becomes heavy at the top suppose now keeping this discussion aside now suppose if i let's say assume the factors or look at the factors which influence the wind we know that wind is always going to move in the direction of pressure gradient force that is we know that wind is going to move from the areas of high pressure to the areas of low pressure and greater is the difference between the high pressure and low pressure greater would be the pressure gradient force and as the pressure gradient force is high then the wind speed will also increase for example if i look at a cyclonic storm in a cyclone there is a very strong low pressure and this low pressure is able to suck up the winds with a lot of force now the wind acquires a lot of speed and then this wind forms the cyclonic wind okay so one factor what i am trying to tell you is that influences the speed of the wind is pressure gradient force okay other than the pressure gradient force one of the factors that is going to influence the speed of the wind will be the force of friction and the force of friction is always going to act exactly opposite to the direction of the wind speed 
ठीक है सो इफ विंड इज मूविंग इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ पी फ्रिक्शन विल बी एग्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट ग्रेटर इज द फोर्स ऑफ फ्रिक्शन लेसर विल बी द स्पीड ऑफ द विंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई लुक एट द विंड स्पीड इन लेट से अपर एटमोसफेयर विंड्स आर ब्लोइंग ऑन द सर्फेस विंड्स आर ब्लोइंग इन द अपर एटमोसफेयर the upper troposphere winds are faster than the surfacial winds the simple reason being they are moving at a great height at those heights we don't have any obstacles so without any obstacle the wind acquires more speed or for example if suppose i look at the concentration of the atmosphere maximum of the concentration of the atmosphere is towards the surface as i go up into the upper parts of atmosphere the air becomes less dense or air becomes rarefied and this air is not able to present much of friction or same ways if i compare westerlies in northern hemisphere with the westerlies in southern hemisphere what i'm going to notice is westerlies in southern hemisphere they move with a greater speed and simple reason being at that latitude where we have westerlies moving in the southern hemisphere there is limited land mass and open oceans that do not present that kind of friction that is given by the land masses which have a number of natural or the artificial structures so if i have a wind which is moving at a greater height there is a likelihood if other factors are constant that at greater height wind speeds will be more lesser is the height of the wind because of greater friction that the wind faces on the surface the speed of the wind will be less so greater is the height more is the speed lesser is the height lesser is the speed and if other factors are constant now when i am cultivating this plant wherein i have applied some amount of urea plant attains good height and becomes heavy at the top now if the wind blows now if the wind blows wind is going to affect this plant and because it is already heavy at the top with the effect of the wind now this plant the stem it bends in this fashion the stem bends in this fashion this bending of the stem because of this wind effect is what we call as stem lodging okay this is what we call as stem lodging so stem lodges because of the effect of the wind and if the stem lodges then harvesting of this crop using machines is now next to impossible moreover your productivity is less because you are having a stem which is lodged and a good part of the plant is away from the sunlight so what we witnessed is that if you want to increase the production you need to use fertilizers like urea but it is going to lead to good height of the plant and the stem lodges in that case now with aid from rockefeller foundation an american breeder norman borlaug he started conducting some experiments in mexico he found that there is a wheat variety which is there in japan norinten variety it is basically a semi dwarf variety that means the height of this variety is less and he was able to identify that certain genes are there which are responsible for this less height of the plant so what he developed was he basically crossed the locally cultivated variety of wheat in mexico with this norinten variety and he was able to produce a wheat variety which had a short height suppose a plant is there the plant had the same number of grains but the plant had a much shorter height with same grains and much shorter height can i say at this place that is at this place one wind speed would be less and if the wind speed is less then in that case because of the friction less wind speed means stem lodging could be prevented so what was the role that when you look at this sonora variety this was a short dwarf this was a semi dwarf variety which could prevent stem lodging if i can prevent stem lodging that means i can now cultivate this particular crop over a very large area now over a very large area if i'm going to cultivate it application of fertilizers and other inputs like water will be very easy cultivating a single crop over a large area is going to give me economies of scale and then the entire field can be harvested at one time using the machines so now agriculture system changed where the focus was on cultivating of this crop over a large area use of modern inputs like machines and fertilizers which could increase the agriculture production this led to the green revolution in the world 
And on the same lines, International Rice Research Institute was set up in Manila, Philippines with funds from or with aid from Ford Foundation. And it was able to develop the first IR8 variety, that is International Rice Variety 8, in 1962. This changed the system of agriculture, the fate of agriculture all over the world and ushered in the Green Revolution. 